In our last session, we read a letter from a man who was a bit discouraged at the repeated mistakes he was making in his marriage. I told him the story of my friend whose golf instructor demonstrated to him that his golf swing needed to change in a certain way. Then the instructor placed a yellow sandbag on the ground marking the path of my friend's old incorrect swing and he challenged him to try to miss the sandbag while he hit 20 golf balls. Despite his newfound wisdom and his best intentions, my friend still hit the yellow sandbag, in other words, he swung the old way all 20 times in a row. Now, back to the writer of the letter and to the end of my friend's story. Quote, My instructor laughed and told me that he would not collect on the bet he had made with me about hitting the sandbag. Then he said that once our body has learned a certain swing pattern, it just keeps repeating it over and over, no matter what we want it to do. Changing that pattern then takes a lot of time and practice and patience. And we usually need someone in the beginning to point out that a change is needed. End of quote. In other words, end of my friend's story. And it's like that with virtually every other pattern in our lives, not just our golf swing. When we were children, almost all of us were loved conditionally. And that created a huge emptiness and fear in us that has continued to the present day, especially since we have continued to be loved conditionally all our lives. Actually, I shouldn't even call it conditional love at all. The word love shouldn't even be associated with what we were given. What most of us were given doesn't deserve to be dignified with the word love. We just traded praise, power, pleasure, and safety with people. It was a temporary commerce in pleasure. There's no blaming in this. It was the best we knew. But out of our emptiness and fear grew the getting and protecting behaviors that became the absolutely consistent patterns of our lives. Some of us became attackers, mostly with the use of anger. Some of us became runners, others victims, and so on. And we practiced these behaviors every day, just as you would practice the piano or practice football or learn physics or any other skill or art, like golf. We became quite good at the use of these behaviors to the point that they became second nature. When we became empty and afraid, we responded with getting and protecting behaviors instantly, reflexively, without a thought. We became masters of our respective crafts. And all the while, we were quite unaware of how good we were. We didn't even realize that we were experts at anger, virtuosos of victimhood, wizards of whining, connoisseurs of controlling, and masters of manipulation. But we were, and we are now. These skills seem to serve us well. They make us feel good, but as you have learned in your marriage and in life overall, they don't work very long or very well. They protect us, but again, as you have learned, they cause more problems than they fix. These getting and protecting behaviors have pretty much destroyed your marriage. In your words, your relationship is now to the point where you don't even communicate anymore. You just exchange accusations. So what can you do about it? We'll talk about that in our next session.